Welcome to this evening's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. We are delighted you all have joined us this evening. Uh, the agenda will be displayed on the screens in the front of the room for you to follow along. And there will be two opportunities this evening to address the board. The first being agenda item 6.1. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda item 7.1 through 11.3. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.1. There is a sign-up sheet located on the table in the back of the room, and each speaker will have five minutes to address the board, and a timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Marshall, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bell? Here. Dr. Nesterbaker? Here. Ms. Cotter? Here. Mr. Villarda? Here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Will you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry. Um, up first this evening, we have district highlights and recognitions. And I would like to pass it over to Mr. Villardo. Thank you, President Davidson. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming this evening. We have a number of uh, recognitions of what we consider uh, to be outstanding work across our district. And it, as I say each time we get to do this, um, it really is one of the highlights of our role that we get to scan across the district and, and, and as I say, recognize some of the incredible work Work that students and staff and just our collective uh, district does. So at this point, I'm going to go over to the podium. I'll ask the board uh, separate uh, superintendent and treasurer to come on out front and then we will begin. The first person we would like to recognize tonight, uh, outstanding student from middle school, but in order to do that, I'd like to have up uh, the principal, Walnut Springs Middle School, Becky Yanni, please come forward. Thank you, good to see you. Thank you, board, it is very, I'm very excited to present Ben Gableman. He was the state champion for the, Ohio, for the state of Ohio for cross country. He ran two miles in 10 minutes and 56 seconds. So he is exceedingly fast. Um, very talented young man. He's a, a scholar athlete at our building, um, and we are going to dash out of here, aren't we? Because we have a choir concert to go to next, just to show how ex you know very involved he is at our building. So we very much appreciate Ben at Walnut Springs. Congratulations. All right, Ben, ready, go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite up the, uh, we're going to honor the Westerville South uh, High School Marching Band. I'd like to have up uh, Mike Porretta, please. Here is a resolution as to why we are honoring this incredible band. Um, but Mike, would you like to call up your uh, field commanders? I know one is here, one could not yes. be here. Yes. Uh, uh, You're Cassie, welcome. You can come on up. Unfortunately, Liz could not be here this evening because she's feeling under the weather. 
Anything you wanted to say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some incredible work that they have done, so we would like to honor them. Resolution of commendation for the Westerville South High School Marching Band. Whereas on Saturday, November 2, 2019, the Westerville South High School Marching Band, conducted by John Laswell, braved frigid temperatures to perform at the Ohio Music Education Association State Marching Band Contest held at Hilliard Bradley High School. And whereas their show, titled Retro, is a love letter to the 1980s music, film, video, games, and culture, featuring music from Back to the Future, Tears for Fears, Tetris, Van Halen, Aha, and The Breakfast Club. Some of you remember that, don't you? <laughs> Whereas for the third year in a row, would you hear this? The third year in a row, the band earned a superior rating, a designation it received five times in the last seven seasons. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent congratulate John Laswell and the field commanders and the Westerville South High School Marching Band for this outstanding accomplishment and thank them for bringing honor and distinction to our district. Please thank them one more time. Time applause for that. <laughs> that is a lot of work. I am sometimes at Westerville South during the summer preceding school years, and they are out there practicing every bit as much as any other sport that I have seen. So that is some tremendous work going on there. So thank you all for joining us tonight to celebrate. Um, at this time, we're going to also honor Heritage Middle School's uh, 30th birthday. I'd like to have uh, Dr. Drew Tomlin, principal at Heritage, please come forward. We're recognizing you because of the age of your school, not the age of you. <laughs> I just, just, as you're off a few years. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> let me read this commendation, and if you'd like to say a word or two about the school, I'd love for you to do that as well. Resolution of Commendation for Heritage Middle School, whereas on November 4, 1986, a building bond was passed that allowed for the construction of Heritage Middle School and a 100-acre tract of land purchased from Miss Una Day in 1973. And whereas Heritage was dedicated on Sunday, October 15, 1989, and was named one of the and, and and named because of the strong education and emphasis and support from the city of Westerville, its residents, and Otterbein College, honoring Westerville's many heritage families, whose members attended Westerville schools for multiple generations. And whereas on October 1989, enrollment at Heritage stood at 1,046 students under the leadership of Principal Robert Schultz. Assistant Principal Henry Clark, and the building also employed 63 staff members and two secretaries. Whereas during the past 30 years, the school has distinguished itself with countless academic and athletic awards and has become famous for providing youngsters with tools which help them to excel to their greatest potential. And whereas today, some 100 staff members at Heritage proudly serve approximately 900 students. And whereas hundreds of staff, students, faculty, and alumni gathered on Saturday, October 12, to reminisce and celebrate three decades of educational excellence. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent congratulate Heritage Middle School on providing 30 years of outstanding opportunities for youth in our community. Heritage Middle School.
Just briefly want to thank uh, Dr. Kellogg and the board for continuing to shine a light on all the excellence that happens at Heritage every day. Uh, I am honored and reminded of the legacy and history that Heritage has. Uh, we are Husky strong because of our amazing teachers, staff, um, students, and families, uh, like the holsters behind me and uh, Miss Ann Bates also who came as well. And we're Husky strong every day because we keep our eyes on the prize and sees every day with kindness, excellence, and Husky pride. So thank you so much. We will now honor another school that makes Heritage or look like a little bit of a baby, but uh, not, a, not an infant. We're going to honor the 50th birthday of Blendon Middle School. At this time, I'd like to invite up Kendall Harris, principal, and George Tombaugh, assistant principal at Blendon Middle School. What? Fred. Did I say George? Sorry. <laughs> I got nothing to say about any of that. I really don't know. Resolution of commendation for Blendon Middle School. Whereas Blendon opened its doors to students in the fall of 1969 is the second junior high school in Westerville with the Bobcat as its mascot and red and white as school colors. And whereas when the school was dedicated on September 28, 1969, Regis Birkenbichler was Blendon's first principal. Dr. Robert Taylor served as president of the Westerville Board of Education. Harold C. McDermott was superintendent of schools. And whereas Blendon initially served approximately 1,000 students in grades 7 through 9 until a 1968 bond issue financed the construction of an additional nine rooms to the original structure consisting of 27 rooms. And whereas by 1974, the student population of Blendon topped 1,283 and overcrowding forced the school to go on split sessions. I'm sure that went over very well in the community. And whereas, from 1976 to 1988, Blendon served mostly 7th and 8th graders, but with the opening of the third Westerville Middle School in 1989, Blendon once again became a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade building, which remains the same today. And whereas, under the direction of several outstanding leaders, two of whom you see before you I know <coughs> firsthand. Whereas under the direction of several outstanding leaders, the mascot was changed to the bulldog, school colors became blue and gray, and an award-winning legacy of excellence in education was created. And whereas on Wednesday evening, November 6, 2019, current and former students, administrators, and staff packed Blendon Middle School to reminisce and celebrate the building's 50th anniversary. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent congratulate Blendon Middle School for 50 years of providing a quality education for pupils and for cementing its legacy in Westerville as a beloved institution of learning, growth, and guidance. Blendon Middle School. I'd like to thank Dr. Kellogg and the board for this opportunity. Uh, I've been a principal for Blended for 10 years this year. Uh, we have a great community that is very supportive, um, great kids, and a great staff that is with me today. Uh, we even also have um, a great volunteer that has been with us for a long time. Uh, when I first came, Mr. Woodruff, Mr. Woodruff, if you stand up, he was here volunteering at Blendon, uh, has been volunteering every single day. Um, very rarely, rarely misses a day of school to come in and volunteer, tutor. And so we're so grateful for his service. And he was um, at Blendon at the start, of the grand opening of Blendon, and he's still with us today. So we're very grateful uh, for the community, the staff, and for the students that we serve. So thank you.
The man's a legend. We had to get him up here as well. And thank you, Fred, for being gracious. <laughs> At this time, really, another great award. We're going to uh, uh, um, honor a, the Central Region Outstanding Art Teacher. I just want you to hear that. This is just really, just really cool that we get to honor... Everything from music to um, excellence in education, 30 years, 50 years, and people just representing uh, this district. And we, again, we are just so honored. So anyway, at this time, I'd like to call up uh, Dr. Paul Hopkins, Executive Director of Human Resources. Good evening. Jules, if you'd like to come up and join me, please. <laughs> I want you to hear this as closely as possible here. Unfortunately, Miss Megan uh, Foreman McCullough, the principal of Hamby Elementary, could not be here with us this evening. So she has asked that I step in and share a few uh, things that she and Mr. Chris Pointer wanted to share about Ms. Thrasci. So I'm going to read a little bit, and then I'll go into the uh, cert certification here, um, uh, resolution, I should say. So I'll go ahead and begin. We are beyond proud to have the opportunity to celebrate Jules Rasci, the art teacher for Emerson and and Hamby Magnet Schools, as Megan writes. As a new principal to Westerville City Schools, I immediately noted that Ms. Rathji is very compassionate about extending her students. She actively seeks to connect her classroom with the local community and other artists. It is well noted that the Hamby and Emerson staff love her. She is very passionate about art and has written several grants to bring unique art opportunities into both of our buildings. Most importantly, Ms. Rathji is very dedicated to the whole child and works to incorporate as many social emotional aspects as she can. In regards to Hanby and Emerson Magnet Schools, we are beyond proud of her extension to our students and celebrate her in this honor. And on a personal note, I had the pleasure of visiting her in her classroom today, and I do have to say in my brief conversations with her, your students, you didn't know, but I had a couple of your students, and I secretly spoke to them and their colleagues, and they could not stop bragging about you and about the amazing things that you bring as a person, as a teacher, and as a colleague. So I wanted to make sure I shared that. And anyone who's had the privilege to visit either Hamby or Emerson, you immediately see the panoply of art around the building that, again, is evidence of your work there. So um, before I read the resolution, I'd also like to recognize uh, Matt, her husband, her parents are also joining us today, and to her sons, Sean and Luke, thank you for sharing your incredible mom with us. She is an amazing teacher in our district, and I want to make sure you guys heard that as well. So with that being said, would you like to read the Dr. resolution? No, no, oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I, great. <laughs> It says, Jules Rathji, art teacher, Emerson and Hamby Elementary Schools, 2019 Central Region Outstanding Art Teacher Award, the Ohio Art Education Association, recognized for her long-term commitment to supporting the visual arts and for having impacted arts education in Ohio in a positive way. We congratulate you for this outstanding accomplishment. Thank you for bringing honor and distinction to our district and wish you continued success in all your future endeavors. Congratulations. And our, our last but uh, certainly not least uh, recognition is something that is uh, even particularly close to our hearts. We are going to uh, honor with a resolution uh, Ms. Jerry Cotter for her service uh, to the board. So 
Uh, at, at this point, I get to tell you what to do. Jerry, would you come and stand here? And I would like to invite your two biggest cheerleaders to come and stand up next to you. Uh, her children, in case you didn't. <laughs> together. Um, and Maddie, her son, um, is a... Uh, wicked dancer i just i just i just want to say that if you turn on some uh britney spears he will break out right now <laughs> <laughs> and uh her daughter cassie as you just heard is one of one of the field commanders for the outstanding um western Bell south band but uh, i know that more than any of that they are her biggest cheerleaders and uh I know that that is reciprocal, that she is your biggest cheerleader. So a resolution of appreciation uh, for Jerry Cotter. Whereas Jerry Cotter was elected by voters to serve on the Westerville City Schools Board of Education for a four-year term beginning January 1, 2016, and whereas during her time on the board, Cotter was named Policy, Finance, and Human Resources Liaison and tw in 2018, she took on the role as board president. And whereas many events transpired during her time of service to expand opportunities for students, and she was influential in developing a plan for renovating Westerville South High School by leveraging existing resources. And whereas she also worked with the board and administration to develop a long-term feasible, uh, excuse me, facilities plan to improve safety and add schools to the southern end of the district, which was made possible by the passage of a ballot issue to cover associated costs. And whereas Cotter was a vocal proponent of mental health, wellness, and awareness, and whereas she lobbied successfully to increase opportunities for pupils in the area of arts, especially music and theater, Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent deeply thank Jerry Cotter for her role in leading the district, excuse me, leaving the district in a financially sound position and helping to provide students and staff with the opportunity to succeed to the best of their ability. Ms. Jerry Cotter. One more hand for Jerry Cotter, please. <laughs> Just a quick thank you to all of you who were able to come here tonight so that we could honor so many people across our district uh, for the outstanding schools for being incredibly gifted in the world of arts and giving that to our students, for incredible music and all of those opportunities, for sharing with us uh, your life for four years. And uh, I can authentically say to you, when, when you're on the board, there's a piece of your life that goes into this. And so we are honored. And so if you would just uh, thank each person one more time. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and as we always say, you are very welcome to stay for the rest of the board meeting, but we know most of you want to leave. So go ahead and go. And I think there's some pictures out in the hallway that are going to be taken. Thank you for coming.
forgot to shake hands. I know you did. I debated saying, Drew, get up here. <laughs> yes, Britney Spears. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. It was really fun. Yes, but you just embarrassed him. We are going to back up here for a second and we're going to vote on the resolutions this evening. So, um, would you like me to call each one of them out, Nicole? Uh, State them, or just the the recognition resolutions this evening? May I have a motion? You can so moved. Second. Ready? Dr. Nestebaker? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Thank you. Um, 4.1, approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education, I'm sorry, approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education for November 18th, 2019. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments, corrections? Hearing none. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Villarda? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Uh, no reports this evening, uh, no public comments this evening, which takes us to financial 7.1, <laughs> resolution to approve the purchases in accordance with ORC 5705.41 and board policy 6320. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Speak to us about this. Thank you, President Davidson, members of the board. Um, these are the then and now purchase orders. So we have two uh, with Columbus City Schools, one for the career tech participation fee and the juvenile detention facility tuition. These are from previous years. Um, there were purchase orders in place at the time, but um, Columbus hasn't been very timely in billing us, so it's crossed fiscal year. So we closed those purchase orders, opened new ones out of the current budget. These have been budgeted for. Battel for Kids, um, there was a late decision made on uh, doing that program this year, so a purchase order was not in place by about a week. Um, we did have the funds budgeted, so um, I would recommend that that's approved. And then the Andrew Insurance Associate, Associates um, for Cybersecurity Liability Insurance, uh, that also is about a week late with a purchase order also has been budgeted for the current year, so I would recommend the board's approval on those purchases. Any questions or comments? Okay. Mr. Pell? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Do you have a question, Jerry? I, I did. <laughs> I was sorry. I'm, I'm late with my question. Yeah. Is it okay if I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering with the uh, portrait of a learner, I was wondering um, what the plans are with that or if there are any additional expenses that we might anticipate. Yeah, so um, Patel for Kids um, <laughs> is a consortium of area school districts. There's really two cohorts. We participated at a smaller level last year and kind of investigative and, and this year we brought in a number of people at the table as part of that for our district. Um, and so um, in that work, uh, portrait of a, of a graduate is one component of that where we look at what are the attributes of a student we want to have graduate from, from our school district. Um, the larger portion of that is really how do we align instructional practices and experiences students are having today in the classroom to the world they're going to work and live in in the future. And so um, the portrait is kind of your capstone of what does that look like? What do those students look like? And then behind that, how do you build programming and align your programming to that? So I would anticipate in this coming spring, there'll be a presentation with the board to talk more about that. Um, and then followed up with conversation with the community at large about what are the attributes of a portrait of a graduate we'd like to see from Westerville City Schools 
to develop our portrait, and then from there start to work that into what does that look like in terms of instructional design and programming within the district. So um, right now it's more um, we're learning um, and uh, learning from districts that are um, uh, across the nation, um, school districts that have several years into this work already. So we get to kind of learn from their lessons along the way and see what they're doing and, and build on that. So you're just exploring then, sounds like. Yeah, we're in the exploratory in terms of understanding um, process and outcomes. And um, the most important thing is uh, how do we then translate that learning into um, experiences for our community, both um, the people that work within our system and the larger community into what are, the, what are the ways we see the world changing and how does that reflect in how our educational system needs to move to prepare kids for the future. I would align it with more professional development growth for our key leaders in the curriculum instruction department at this point as they learn and then think about how do they translate that into learning for the organization overall. Okay, thanks. Continue voting. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Um, which takes us to our personnel consent agenda. Is it okay if I do this all as one? Motion? Okay, 8.1 through 8.0. May I have a motion for the personnel consent agenda? So no moved. Second. And Dr. Hopkins is with us. Thank you. President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, I'd like to present for your consideration tonight's personnel consent agenda. Some of the highlights include we have one retirement, a licensed and employed, Susan Shoren. She is retiring from her school psychologist position after 21 years of service. So we certainly thank her for her service and look forward to recognizing her at our official end of the year retirement celebration. We have 10 resignations from various classified and classified sub positions, a few one-time payments for staff who have participated in professional development, the employment of 18 individuals in a number of classified and classified substitute positions, and finally in the licensed employment section, we have the employment of a new teacher to our district and a number of people to various supplemental and classified pupil activity program positions. I'd also like to note there is an MOU for your consideration with Local uh, 138 that adds the six work days to the calendar calendar uh, for our high school food service workers this year. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Hearing none. Thank you, Paul. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Velardo? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Um, our old business this evening, would it be okay if we also took this as one motion? Okay. 9.1 through 9.7, may I have a motion? Um, for these policy readings? So moved. Second. Any comments, questions? Hearing none. Dr. Nestor-Baker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. New business this evening, 10.1, first reading for policy 5200 attendance, and Debbie Meisner is going to come speak with us. Welcome. President Davidson, members of the board, I am here to present uh, your request to uh, make some revisions yet again to policy 5200 attendance. Uh, our legislation um, of Ohio Revised Code continue, continues to change. This time they are adjusting the, um, the calculation for chronic absenteeism. They are no longer including medically excused absences in that calculation and the policy language checks on that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. So that's a good thing, and I'm pleased to see it. What I'm not pleased to see, though, is um, reasonable excuses at the hour level that the state has deemed appropriate. So, for example, as I was thinking about it, and doing the math in my head as regards the number of hours a student can miss in a month before he or she is deemed excessively absent. There are any number of situations that are reasonable as we have always termed it 
for students to miss. So for instance, a student could very easily miss a full week of school due to the death of a family member. And yet, that family would very soon be followed up on their grief with a letter stating that their child had been excessively absent because the state does not deem that one of our reasonable excuses. So even though the medical piece is good, and I'm glad they did that, there are still issues with that. And even though we continue to revise this policy as the state continues to revise what it has to say about it, there are still significant structural weaknesses, in my mind, in the legislation that leads us to be forever revising this policy. This is an example where local districts do know their students best. And we should have significantly more capacity to identify reasonableness and what is excessive and what is not. So good news on the one hand, but overall there are still significant weaknesses that the state uh, continues to support. I agree. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Ten point two, first meeting, first reading policy fifty four ten, academic acceleration, early entrance to kindergarten and early high school graduation. And Kaylee Nestor Baker is joining us. Welcome. Good evening, President Davidson, members of the board, Superintendent Kellogg, and Treasurer Marshall. Thank you for letting me present this evening. Policy 5410 focuses on accelerating our students in grades K-12 and serves as a guide for appropriately placing students who have demonstrated a mastery for understanding on-level um, content and needing some above grade level learning opportunities. So the gifted department has revised the policy to provide clarity to the language that's in the current iteration of the policy. And that ensures that we continue to meet the needs of our students as our programs and our services continue to evolve. So the main revision in this policy is to take the processes out of the policy and put them in newly developed administrative guidelines. So that took the bulk of the policy and moved it over into that. Um, the language also now includes in the administrative guidelines some um, opportunities if administration or the evaluation team deems it necessary to revisit the um, acceleration of a student for any number of reasons, then that is in there as well to make sure that they are in the best placement for them. We also added language to the policy that acknowledges forms of acceleration that do not require a change in placement. So those are things like curriculum compacting and flexible credit opportunities, dual enrollment, those types of things. There are lots of forms of acceleration that don't require a change in traditional placement. So that's in there. And another set of language is in there that acknowledges that we look at the social and emotional development of children when we are accelerating them. Um, finally, the timeline, this is in the newly developed administrative guidelines, the timeline has been adjusted to ensure that we are given enough time to the evaluation team so that they can gather the data and appropriately assess and properly place the students who are accelerated. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. <coughs> She's afraid I'm going to rip her on policy because she knows that's what I do. <laughs> be kind to her. I'll be kind. No, okay. I, I don't have questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 11.1, .1, appointment of President Pro Tem. I would like to at this time uh, enter a motion to nominate Dr. Nancy Nestor Baker to be our President Pro Tempore. Second. Okay. Best four. five minutes of January for me. <laughs> is, it, is it a nomination or is it an appointment? Yeah. What does it Just need for to be? An appointment, please. I would like to appoint <laughs> Dr. Nancy Nestor Baker to pro President Pro Tempore. And then I for would, 2020, okay. beginning in January, <laughs> okay. for five minutes. I would like a motion. 
I think you have to just throw out the name and then that's an option. Right? Yes, we need to move the motion onto the table and then um, insert my name into it. I'd like to withdraw <laughs> because if you're going to make it this difficult for five minutes, Sorry. so what am I? I'm just, just I'm just, give us a name. I'm just throwing Nancy out. Okay. okay. So I, her name, Dr. Nestor Baker, mm -hmm. has been entered and thrown out. Okay. So a motion to approve Dr. Nestor Baker as president pro tem from January 1, 2020, to the election of the next board president of January 13, 2020. So moved. Second. You still agree? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, ready? Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Thank you. 11.2 uh, authorize board member compensation to remain at $80 per meeting up to 36 meetings per year for board members whose term begins January 1st, 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? You are? Okay. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Velarda? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Thank you. 11.3, uh, approved benefit consulting agreement with, is it Horan? Horan. Horan, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall, you want to talk to us about this? <clears throat> um, yes, President Davidson, members of the board, thank you. Uh, so this, uh, the Westerville City School District's Insurance Trust Committee conducted a request for proposal process for employee benefits consultation services. Um, the RFP was sent out to vendors who requested to be included in this process and also posted to the district's website. Uh, the request was posted on September the 25th and the deadline for proposals was October the 21st. We received four proposals in total. Uh, of the four proposals received, the Insurance Trust Committee interviewed two companies. After evaluating both companies during the interview process and comparing costs and checking references, um, the Insurance Trust Committee recommended that the district into, enter into a contract with Horan for employee benefits consultation services. Uh, this, what you have before you, is a three-year contract that will result in a savings to the district of approximately $29,000 over the contract term. Please let me know if you have any questions about that. No, no questions, but uh, just a thank you for keeping us so thoroughly updated mm -hmm. as you went through the process. You're welcome. Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. That takes us to public comments, which we do not have any this evening. Followed by board comments. Who would like to go first? Um, sure. Um, I would like to uh, congratulate all those um, who we had the opportunity to recognize and celebrate um, just a little bit earlier here in the evening. Um, I thank uh, all of them for their hard work and congratulate them on their accomplishments. Um, I would also um, like to take a moment to thank um, Ms. Carter uh, for her service um, on this board and to our community. Uh, thank you so very much for all of the contributions that you have made um, and just the tremendous help that you have been to me um, in the time since I've been on the board. So I wanted to publicly thank you um, for your service. Um, and then um, finally, I uh, just wanted to take a moment to um, wish all a uh, happy holiday season, um, however you celebrate that, um, but hope everybody has a very uh, happy and safe holiday season and look forward to um, getting started once again after the new year. I would obviously echo um, uh, 
Mr. Bell's uh, comments about um, those folks that we were able to recognize tonight. We really, we really don't gloss over that. Uh, I hope you all understand that. That's just some tremendous work that goes on in this district. We're very grateful. Um, I think I'd like to say a, a word of gratitude to the community that helped us to um, move forward uh, with a, uh, a, a levy and a, and a big ask and thankful for those who um, trusted us and, 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 and affirmed. And to those who didn't, we uh, still value who you are as well and uh, just are grateful for your participation all across the board. Um, I would uh, concur with uh, Mr. Bell that uh, Ms. Cotter was a tremendous help in uh, helping Mr. Bell to do what he needed to do. <laughs> Uh, and that was, uh, it, it took a village, but we got him up to speed. No, uh, Jerry has been a tremendous uh, person on this board and speaks her mind. And uh, that is, that's an authentic thing that is needed in the public arena to speak your mind when it may not be popular. And um, I mentioned her two children and uh, on a personal, uh, personal note, um, it is quite evident that uh, you have loved and raised them well. And that's a, that's a, a, a personal uh, triumph, um, I know. And so uh, thank you for what you've done, but uh, really much more than what you've done. Thank you for who you have been and uh, who you are. And as you um, uh, cycle off the official piece of the board. Um, as Dr. Nestor Baker will tell you, that just means you're in the front of the line when we seek volunteers. Right. So, um, you're taking up my comments. <laughs> so, so thank you for honoring us and for representing, I think, representing the Westerville community very well. At the risk of repeating what's already been said, I'm going to repeat what's already been said. But I'm going to add something. Tracy, thank you for your leadership this year as president. I appreciate that very much. It's been a good year. A lot has been accomplished. Uh, we have dealt with a lot of challenges in the district. We have met them. We'll continue to meet them in coming years. I also am deeply grateful for uh, all of the efforts of our, our students, our families, our staff members, and the small portion that we get to recognize here, we know is just a very tiny bit of the incredible excellence that lives within this school district. And then if you think about the Heritage Birthday and the Blendon Birthday in that context, and the comments that were made in those resolutions, it is the community that makes this possible always the community that makes it possible for public education to thrive and to soar as we do here in Westerville. So I am deeply grateful to be part of such a community, even though I got to admit I had forgotten about the, the split sessions at Blendon, <laughs> even though I was on split sessions at the same time at Westerville High School at the time. Finally, Jerry, thank you. You have been uh, steadfast. You have been tenacious, and I always appreciate your candor, and I very much have appreciated your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously I have a lot of people to thank. <laughs> um, first, of course, I want to thank my family, my kids, who have been very supportive, and of course they've gone home. <laughs> support only goes so far. Yes, yeah, support only goes so far. I can only ask so much. Um, of course, I want to thank my um, fellow board members. I've enjoyed working with each one of you. Um, and um, I appreciate also um, your candor and, and um, being um, sincere in your support for the things you believe in. And also, of course, supporting the district. Um, I've appreciated getting to know you over the years. It's hard to believe it's been four years already. Um, and I would like to thank our treasurer, superintendent, um, the executive team. I've really enjoyed um, working with you all uh, very much, and I hope to see you at events uh, in the future. 
Um, also, I'd like to thank, of course, our dedicated teachers, transportation staff, custodial staff, um, administrative teams, the food staff, um, and very much um, I would like to thank the community um, and also, of course, people who have supported me, people that supported Levy, people who didn't. Um, it's all, everybody has a place um, and it's an important part of the community. And I know the resolution covered a lot of, of the things that I um, am happy to have been a part of um, on the board. Um, but one thing I, I wanted to mention specifically is I'm really um, happy that we were able to recruit uh, the treasurer, Nicole. Um, I think that you've been a great addition to the team, uh, for the executive team, so very happy about that. And I'm looking forward to spending more time with my family. Um, and they are great. I love them both very much. You're right, Rick. <laughs> Um, and I, of course, I plan to continue to support the district, um, at the very least as a parent volunteer. So thank you all. Happy holidays. Yes. Oh. Safe and happy new year to everyone. Um, wow. It's hard to go last when everyone says kind of the same thing. So yes, thank you tonight to all of our honorees. Thank you for all the hard work that you do, whether you're a student or a staff member. Um, Jerry, it is uh, a pleasure and an honor to serve with you. I know we started out as colleagues, but I can say as we walk away this evening, we are definitely friends. I appreciate your honesty and loyalty and how you pushed us and made us look at things in a different way, um, very valuable. So you will truly be missed. Thank you. Um, and happy holidays to all. And with that, well, Nicole and John, do you want to say anything tonight at the end of the year? I'm no pressure. I'm sorry. I know I just put you, like, is there any, I know we're like rounding out the end of the year, so. Um, I just want to thank Jerry for your service. Um, she was board president when I was hired into the district, and um, I, I have valued our relationship through this process, and I want to thank you for your service and your time on the board, and just thank the board for another great year. Um, you know, I'm excited about the things to come for the district, and just really excited for 2020. So to, to Jerry, uh, as everybody said, thank you for your service. On a personal note, thank you for pushing. Um, that is something that um, I, I do personally always appreciate of people that make us better. And, uh, um, and, and that's an important piece of, of what all of our board members do, and I appreciate uh, your efforts to do that. Um, and of course, to all of our board members, thank you for what's been an outstanding year in service to this community overall, as everybody's mentioned. To the community, thank you for your support in every um, uh, way uh, and fashion that it can be. Um, and to the kids and staff, thank you for what they do. And most importantly, as, as, um, as productive and as exciting as 2019 was, 2020 is looking to be an outstanding year. And so uh, let's keep our head up and uh, make good things happen for kids um, as we move forward. Great. Thank you. 14.1, um, the board will meet on Monday, January 13th for an organizational regular meeting at 6 p.m. here at the Early Learning Center. And with that, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mr. Bell? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Dr. Nestbaker? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. We're adjourned. It's 54.